We speak about the internet, and we spoke the whole morning about the internet. The internet is a public good. The internet has changed our lives quite substantially over the last 25 years. But I think that's only the beginning. The internet will have a transformative character on each individual industry and each individual country. It will affect each individual being in the world. And that's the reason why the forum as a informal, impartial, not-for-profit platform has offered its services to bring together all the organizations, all the people in the world, the multi-stakeholders, on a global basis, to look how we can preserve and even build the internet as a tool, beneficiary for mankind. We will engage into this process in a very open, very transparent way trying to make sure that everything which is discussed can be commented on by everybody in the world, and also to make sure that everybody in a positive spirit should contribute to find solutions for the manifold problems. What is also important in this initiative, and which is the second objective, is to make sure that not only one third of the world's population has access, but that we extend the access in a very fast time, because the internet is probably the foremost tool for developing countries and to make them flourishing. So I pass on now the floor to Adrian Monk, who will introduce the speakers, but again, a very cordial welcome. Professor Schwab, thank you. And uh, I'm going to start by apologizing uh, for getting this running three minutes late. I'm sorry to everyone. I've broken the first rule of Swiss punctuality, but I promise <laughs> you I'll keep it going on track and on time. Great pleasure to welcome you to this press briefing on the Net Mundial Initiative and just welcoming our panelists. Fadi Chahadi from ICANN. We have Minister Almeida from the Government of Brazil, President Ilves of Estonia. We have Angelema from the Web Foundation. We have Pierre Nontem from Accenture and Rick Sammons representing the World Economic Forum. Uh, I'm gonna ask each of them just to explain their view of the proceedings this morning and how the <laughs> initiatives got underway. Uh, afterwards, we'll have time for questions. When it comes to questions, if you can just tell me uh, your name and your organization, and we can try and squeeze in as many as possible in the time that we have. But first, I'm going to ask each of our panelists for a brief uh, overview of proceedings so far this morning. I'm going to start, Fadi, with you. Thank you. Uh, today was the culmination of efforts that have started a year ago. Efforts to show how the multi-stakeholder model can solve internet issues and provide real solutions beyond the technical areas where the multi-stakeholder model is working very well today. So today is the beginning of expanding the multi-stakeholder approach to solve real problems that have not been solved for the internet to grow in a secure, civil, and empowering fashion. It's very important today for us to recognize that governments, businesses, civil society, technical organizations, academics have come together from all over the world. And thanks to the forum's incredible and very valuable platform and openness, we're all here together to figure out the path forward. Now, where I hope this will take us is to real solutions. I think we have many places where issues have been identified and new issues continue to be identified. But here, in this initiative, we will start the actual coalescing to solve problems together. The forum is a great enabler, and for this, we're very thankful 
to Professor Klaus Schwab and his great team for making this possible today. The internet owes them thanks. We all owe them thanks. And I look forward to a very fruitful afternoon because this afternoon is equally important. We will take the great ideas we shared this morning and we will move into an action mode. Thank you. Minister Almeida. Well, thank you. Well, I'm going to start saying that it's hard to talk about internet governance. Few people know what it means. It's something abstract that people do not recognize the importance of it. And when I talk to friends in the Brazilian government, one analogy that they use to represent this is uh, climate change. That's an issue that took a lot of time to be understood by the, by the population, by the society, and also to get some uh, concrete measurements in, uh, in place. Mm -hmm. So I think that we are in the same situation. Internet is becoming uh, a major part of our daily life. Mm -hmm. And the problems also arise because of this, uh, because of this, uh, 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 in, this uh, increase of the, of the internet activities that everyone uh, has uh, today. Uh, in the past, people complained about, oh, my email is, is so slow. Others complained about the, the video was not uh, 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 being exhibited uh, in the right way. But now we see a different kind of problems, problems that are related to, to, uh, the, to the social aspects, to the human aspects, uh, privacy invasion, uh, privacy leakage, uh, uh, cyber crimes, uh, 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 hackers, and these problems create problems for the population, and they don't know why, and they don't know what to do. Some countries have infrastructure that can handle this kind of, of problem. And in the case of Brazil, we have uh, 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 an institutional and regulatory framework that uh, is uh, working on these problems. And this uh, regulatory uh, and institutional framework in Brazil has this characteristic of the multi-stakeholder composition. So multi-stakeholder is key for us. But not, not only multi-stakeholders. Op openness, transparency, inclusiveness are all characteristics that Brazil, the Brazilian government, the President Dilma values a lot. So these are uh, uh, values that we work uh, in order to, to bring these problems to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the internet governance mechanism. But as I said, some countries do not have this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, adequate institutional framework. So uh, uh, after the success of Net Mundial and the high-level panel uh, 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 led by President Ives, there are several suggestions in order to improve uh, the internet governance System, the global internet governance system. And, but who is going to do that? ICANN has a limited uh, activity. Uh, IETF has another uh, limitation in terms of uh, its mission. So maybe we need to think of new mechanisms, new framework that will help countries to solve these new problems that arise due to the massification of the internet. So that I think that this morning was a first step into that direction. Minister, thank you very much. President Ilves, you moderated this morning's conversation. Can you give us your perspective? Well, thank you. Uh, I think it's quite clear to everyone here that uh, the massive, uh, exponential, with a very high exponent, uh, growth of the internet of technology, is accompanied by you know, Moore's law, where the Computer power, computing power doubles every 18 months, that everything else has lagged behind. Uh, how we administer uh, the internet, systems that were adequate in, uh, you know, I mean, we recall it was, uh, the first web browser was 1993, so 21 years uh, since Andreessen came out with that and only 25 since uh, Tim Berners-Lee came out with the uh, HTT protocol. So, this has all moved at an amazing speed. How we deal with this, it's just that, I mean, we haven't kept up with it. Part of the problem, as I said in the morning, is that it's kind of the, um, 
It's the problem uh, uh, described by C.P. Snow 55 years ago in his book, The Two Cultures. I mean, okay, the technology part's moving very rapidly. Um, and sort of the, the, the humanistic or the philosophical or the legal side uh, hasn't had a clue about the technology. But in fact, the, the part of the kind of the democratic world is, to, I mean, you, these things have to be, have to be in harmony to, to be sort of mild. Uh, and so there, it's about time. Now that we can thank Mr. Snowden, I guess, for to be a catalyst for discussions on this, but that really brought to the fore the, on the one hand, the administering of uh, DNS uh, by ICANN, which has been doing all these years, um, and it brought to the fore the uh, the other dimension, which is right. I mean, you know, so human rights, freedom of expression, uh, that were the participation of civil society uh, in, um, and more, more broadly, the multi-stakeholder model uh, that is, uh, I think everyone agrees, is a sine qua non for moving on. Uh, we, we have to, this is, this is a catch-up exercise, and, uh, and I'm glad that, uh, genuinely glad that the World Economic Forum has taken upon itself to actually bring together the various uh, organizations, uh, efforts, uh, initiatives to do this. I mean, and, and just to keep in mind, these are not the sole ones. I mean, there is also, uh, I mean, you have organizations uh, such as the Freedom Online Coalition, which is more governmental, but pushing free expression. You have, you have, you have organizations like uh, EFF, which, Clearly, is uh, I mean a, a grassroots organization uh, concerned about the same issues. I mean, I, we need a place where we can come together and discuss this. We can, and I actually do need to do the analytic work. What is something that is a matter of national legislation? What is what is a purely technical issue? What is something that really is up to civil society? Uh, so we're at the beginning. Uh, but it's also a vital importance that we do get somewhere. I mean, from my own experience, I've found that um, the technology, in many cases, has moved so far beyond the, uh, the understanding of, for example, legislators and governments uh, that really, I mean, they look at this and they sort of shrug their shoulders. Uh, and with, then when you start talking about the possibilities and the dangers inherent in new technology, they have no clue. I mean, they really don't. And on the other side as well, uh, you see massive paranoia on the part of governments and legislators about things that are really have, do not impinge upon anything and simply represent an improvement in the level of services that can be provided using modern technology. So I see this as a, as a, as a, a crucial first step. Um, Net Mundial did its part, a very important part. ICANN did its part, and, I, and some very necessary changes and reforms are, have been enacted or are in the process of being enacted thanks to that, because we needed a wake-up call. I mean, there were many wake-up calls, and we finally woke up. Uh, and so today, I, I see the beginning of what will be inevitably a long process, probably a continuous process, because with Moore's Law, I mean, we're going to keep having new and new and different things that we will have to face. It's not static. It's not as if, okay, we've solved the right of free expression forever. It will keep changing. We will solve the problem of privacy forever. Uh-uh, because they will always come there will always be some very clever people who will come up with new and new things, and again, precisely because they are not, have not ever really taken a course in John Locke. Uh, do not understand, I mean, they're just thrilled that they can do something really cool and spy on someone a better way, and, uh, but not necessarily understand the implications of what they're doing. Uh, so I think what I would, I personally would see that this is a absolutely necessary and vital beginning of a process 
that ultimately, I think, will become a permanent thing. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, Angela Emer from the World Wide uh, Web Foundation, can I just turn to you to give us uh, a perspective on this morning's proceedings? There are uh, two things that we're really encouraged about from this morning's discussion, and um, one big worry. So to start with the, the two things that were really exciting about this morning, I think the first is the focus on action and the um, evident willingness in the room to roll up our sleeves and get down to it. As the founder of the World Wide Web Foundation, Tim Berners-Lee, said in his remarks this morning, we are in danger of losing the open internet that has powered so much progress and economic growth in the past decades, and there is very little time. The, uh, the human right to access, as we've heard, uh, is only enjoyed by a minority of the world's population. The rights to freedom of expression and freedom of association online are under daily attack. And less tangibly, the rights to innovation and creativity online, which have been such a transformative force for the global economy, are also threatened by trends in areas like network neutrality and copyright protection. Those are all very worrying things, and I think the the Net Mundial Summit earlier this year that ICANN and the government of Brazil pulled together was a major breakthrough precisely because it put expanding and protecting human rights online at the very core of the task ahead. So an initiative to take that further is very welcome. The second thing that is, was very encouraging about this morning is, is to see the World Economic Forum taking the initiative to get business as a whole more engaged beyond the tech industries. As, as someone said this morning, all, I think it was you, they're all business is digital business now. And business has an enormous role and responsibility in protecting and expanding yes. the open internet. And to be frank, uh, we feel that there are many areas where business could, can do much better. Mm. I, I want to give just three examples. Privacy obviously comes first to mind. Uh, there are many steps that businesses can take quite independently of governments to improve the security of users and their control over their personal data. The second is um, when it comes to access, finding better solutions in areas such as infrastructure sharing and uh, opening up spectrum to enable wider access. Uh, and the, th the third uh, area, just to give a, th a third example, is in better balancing uh, copyright protection with uh, flexibilities that will allow for continued innovation and public interest. So it's great that WEF has taken this initiative and, and we hope that it will prompt business to reflect on its own practices and take the lead in, in finding solutions that business itself can implement to expand human rights. A worry, however, um, action is critical, but so is legitimacy, uh, so is coherence, and so is clarity about objectives and means. So, Strengthening existing mechanisms may be preferable for taking forward some actions than setting up a new body. So I think a strong message is let's not rush to set up a new body just because an existing body is not already delivering an action. Let's have a careful look at who is best place to convene and coordinate, which types of actions. And let's do that, as many speakers have already stressed, in as open and inclusive a manner as possible. Yes. Uh, in, in keeping with the Net Mundial outcome document. And I think that means that future discussions have to be more open uh, to particularly developing country participation, uh, obviously to the participation of women, um, and to the participation of people who cannot physically be in this room. So we look forward to a, an open and transparent discussion about how is the World Economic Forum best placed to add value to the existing initiatives and how can we as business and civil society and governments contribute to strengthening the existing initiatives so that ultimately our goal of realizing human rights online can be achieved? Thanks. Thank you. And Pierre Nantes, some questions there from Anne for, for you sitting there representing business from Accenture. Uh, can you give us your perspective on this morning and perhaps add uh, to those points raised by Anne? Yes, yeah, sure. And very briefly, I think this morning we confirmed the uh, unique opportunity offered by the Internet to enable the digital economy. And we confirmed that it, it's going to be a critical enabler to drive growth and through growth, prosperity, wealth, uh, jobs and well-being for, for the planet. Uh, we confirm as well that the digital uh, opportunity enabled by the Internet is pervasive across the board. 
it's going to impact all the, not only all the industries, and, and, and we talked a lot about healthcare as an illustration of the benefits that could be brought uh, to the citizen and to the patient, but as well, it will enable governments. And as you said, every business is going to be a digital business, but uh, every government is going to be an e-government uh, at some point in time. Uh, and uh, now, uh, all these benefits provided by the digital economy enabled by the internet uh, are currently coming based on a very open global internet architecture. So what is the risk we framed this morning? Uh, in my own words and in the business world, I would mention that it's the risk of fragmentation and protectionism. And that could bring, uh, put a halt in all the benefits uh, offered by the internet. And I was very pleased this morning to see uh, an amazing consensus between the different stakeholders with their own words, of course, around what it is we need to get right. And, and I guess there's been a, a great consensus around that should be quite a bottom-up, open, multi-stakeholder uh, governance architecture. Not easy to execute, uh, but clearly uh, that should what we should aim at cre uh, creating and probably and certainly an uh, ongoing process. And second, indeed, we need to have the right uh, internet governance around some specific issues uh, we tackled this morning, such as, of course, uh, uh, data privacy and trust. I think the word trust has been used a lot. Uh, cyber security, for all the reasons we mentioned. But I was very uh, interested this morning to hear a lot of dialogue around access. And we should be careful that sometimes we are taking a Western point of view or a developed country point of view around protecting uh, uh, what we have developed rightfully, but we need to bear in mind that billions of people that just want to have access and it's the responsibility of us uh, uh, to uh, provide this, uh, this access to the citizen and to maintain the innovation. Uh, so we need to find the right governance to provide the right principles, framework, potentially standards that will keep the openness, globalization, nature uh, of the internet to enable this digital world that can provide so many benefits while providing the right answers uh, to some of the uh, key issues and, and doing that in a multi-stakeholder standpoint. And I was very encouraged and very grateful to the WEF for organizing this meeting and amazed again by the level of consensus and seriousness of the discussion this morning, which is a good backbone to get started with. Thank you. Before I turn to my colleague Rick Sammons very briefly, um, we've got a wealth of uh, knowledge in the room, uh, as well as our media colleagues. And uh, I just want to uh, turn to Deputy Commerce Secretary Bruce Andrew from the US government and just ask you, Bruce, for a, a US take on this morning's proceedings. Um, well, so in, in a world where you never want to get ahead of your boss, um, <laughs> I would actually encourage you all to, uh, Secretary Pritz, to read Secretary Pritzker's uh, statement, which is being put out this morning, but essentially, um, in very brief, first she just uh, thanks the WEF and Professor Schwab for um, their leadership in helping to bring this group together. Um, and also, um, you know, lays out a couple issues that we think is the, is the Secretary and the United States government think uh, are important to consider as we move forward. Bruce, thank you. And sorry for putting you on the spot like that. Um, <laughs> Rick, can I just hear briefly from you about this, your take on this morning's meetings and, and the role the forums played in uh, helping to uh, get people together? Today was a first step, or it is still a first step, in fact. We will have discussions that will continue uh, beyond the initial scoping conversation we had this morning about what this type of exercise should focus on. The issue posed this morning, and by this initiative more generally, is in what ways can international cooperation be deepened or widened to enable this movement from identification of problems to some collective solutions on issues. Mm -hmm. And that may include the role of the forum, but it's, this is a much bigger question than the forum itself. And so uh, the, this, uh, this platform that we are collectively part of here is an exploration of that wider question of how can the ecosystem for improved progress be enabled in a few different ways. And it, let me just briefly uh, point to a couple of the specific notions that came up this morning, which I think will inform how we proceed. One is that many of these uh, questions are not, in, not solely technical issues. They're really at the intersection of innovation and wider economic, social, security, or political concerns. And so it is a, a good time to be able to bridge 
toward a wider discussion engaging different kinds of ministries from different portfolios, uh, different stakeholders, different academic disciplines, into thinking through those wider policy issues. There is already a very well-developed uh, governance ecosystem and set of institutions for the technical aspect of internet governance. And this exercise is explicitly not focused on that. We have a robust set of institutions in that regard. It is really asking the question about what are, how can cooperation, dialogue, be better enabled to address these wider issues. Among the particular notions where there are some very good practices out there on different aspects of these social concerns or economic uh, regulatory matters or security considerations. And one, one way a cooperation can improve things is to identify those practices, scale them, make them better known, help to apply them more broadly. Other access came up for developing countries and disadvantaged populations. There was a strong push in the room to think about collective action of willing partners who might be able to ex make progress on that very important question. Put online the next billion or so citizens around the world through some self-associating uh, cooperation. Furthermore, there are problems that arise uh, where there are not well-established governance mechanisms in a variety of countries at different levels of development because the expertise is very widely distributed. The, the capabilities out there, the institutions, there's no real clearinghouse for that. There's no way to reduce the transaction costs for a small government or even a robust government that hasn't yet thought through its governance frameworks to be able to access that. That could be a, another way. And moreover, there are existing institutions for dialogue itself. The forum is a platform for dialogue. It, it's, it has a specific, specific utility in that it does bring leaders from across global society, different uh, disciplines, different stakeholders at the leader level. And, but, but there are grassroots platforms. And so one question that was posed is, how might international cooperation be better mobilized to support, for example, the Internet Governance Forum? And so these are some examples of, of the of the way we got some initial guidance for the larger question we're posing here is that how can uh, international cooperation more generally advance the ball? Now, one, one last uh, uh, point here, and that, that is about our process. This is a first step. This is not a press conference to announce a set of decisions or outcomes. It, we are more scoping how we should proceed. And one very, very important uh, uh, aspect of the process going forward for us is consultation. We need to think about more structurally how we have uh, a wider conversation of, over the next six months, consulting various fora and, and players and experts as to what does the international community need in this regard? What kind of configuration, cooperation structure uh, would be helpful in helping to coalesce expertise around pathways to solutions or some of the collective actions that uh, this morning discussions indicated. So we'll be having a discussion later on that will continue the scoping process, but particularly in how do we make sure this is as transparent as open. The forum is committed uh, to that, and um, we have webcast uh, all aspects of the proceedings uh, today, uh, and, but we're really asking a more fundamental question of uh, how do we strike a balance between moving to action on the one hand, but having as wide a possible opportunity to get views and comments from the international community. Rick, thanks very much. Can I get a sense in the room of who has a question? Just if you've got a question, raise your hands for me and um, I can get a sense of how disciplined I'm going to have to be about managing the time available. So I can see uh, the slow movement of people raising, uh, raising hands. So we'll start with the gentleman in the orange. And can you just tell us where you're from and uh, your news organization, your name? Yeah, uh, Jamil Chade from uh, Estado de São Paulo, Brazilian newspaper. Uh, my question is actually to anyone uh, in the panel. Um, I didn't have the chance to, uh, of watching your uh, webcast this morning, but what was it that you actually decided uh, this morning? Uh, what was it that you actually had so much consensus about? Uh, for us in the press, we have to bring this information out to the, pr to, to the public. And it's very hard uh, if we cannot actually know exactly what happened. If you could be so kind to perhaps get three, two or three points and you know, show us exactly where you, where you had the consensus. And secondly, how long, you, you said uh, around six months of uh, consultations, uh, but how long would it take for this new organization or new structure or new platform to actually be created? Or are you going to wait 
for ICANN's uh, reform to be finished so this can be uh, actually uh, implemented. Thank you. I'm uh, going to ask President uh, Elvis to take that one, and he's uh, well, conveniently put his, quest uh, put his hand up. <laughs> I'll just say that the issue is not so much decision, but I think uh, what we've done is uh, taken the step from net mundial suggestions to actually having people doing something about it. That is the most important thing. That is, I mean, the, you know, the history of the past hundred years is full of great recommendations that are, you know, basically you know, just perfect. But, I mean, even in our own government, we have all kinds of great suggestions. But unless it gets implemented, unless people pick it up and start and take the ball and start moving with it, they remain nice suggestions. And that was, I think, one of the concerns we've had is that Net Mundial was fantastic. But who's going to do something about it? And someone's got to do it, so thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Almeida and to Fadi Shahad, we, and especially thanks to the World Economic Forum, something's happening, and that is far more important. You, you cannot decide, and we don't really have the democratic legitimacy here to decide anything, but we have, what, we, what has been decided is to move forward based on what the past year has given us. Anyone on the panel want to help the headline writing prospects for our <laughs> colleague from the Brazilian, Brazilian media well, minister? Uh, I have two short comments. Uh, the first one, the journalist asked about consensus. And I think that we, we can say that most stakeholder model was a kind of consensus. Uh, everyone talked about the importance of having multi stakeholder models. And why is that kind of model important? If we think about the internet, it was and it has been a collective construction. People from academia, uh, the technical community, uh, uh, corporations, government, government, all of them contribute to, to the construction of the internet. So the most stakeholder model that involves all these stakeholders is the most appropriate model to think about the future because you have all the, the interests represented there. So this is one. one. And then finally, uh, what we, 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 we saw today is, uh, is the beginning of the construction of a process. We are not going to present anything uh, concrete today, but we, but we have the direction of things that we want uh, to construct in the, in the short term. I think if I can paraphrase Churchill, that's not the uh, beginning of the end, it's the end of the beginning. So hopefully that's, uh, that's helpful. Lady there. <laughs> and I'll come back to you if we have a moment. Thank you. My name is Nicolas de from La Gefi. Um, the question is, whatever organization is going to eventually put those suggestions into place, what kind of power will it have and how will it resist state powers? We've learned recently that that wasn't so easy. Okay, that's an interesting question. I think that presupposes that the end result of this conversation will be an organization. I'll let people come back to that. We'll try and take a couple more questions in as well. Uh, it's sort of along the same lines, but uh, uh, Nina Larson, AFP. I was just wondering, with this multi-stakeholder approach, um, you're talking about consultations for six months. Is, there set, is it set that the people who have been in the discussions now are going to be continuing these consultations? Is it going to be a set... Um, set up or is it going to be fluid? Could you please explain? Okay. <clears throat> and so I'll just take you as well. Thank you. Miguel Molina, Mexican uh, independent uh, reporter. You are talking about implementation and I think that's the devil in, in this conversation because implementing any decision that this forum or any other forum can come about is going to be very difficult via -V the reluctance of some governments to abide to legislation, to international agreements, and to even ethics in some cases. What are you supposed to do? What are you planning to do uh, to face the, and, and solve this problem eventually? So, so three big points there. Is this conversation going to end in an organization, firstly? I think secondly, is it a formal or informal process? And lastly, um, when it does come to something like the end, of an end, is there going to be an issue around implementation? 
all big, knotty questions. Who would like to kick off? Rick, do you want to begin by giving a little bit more background? Sure. Let me, uh, I think one of the things we've learned from the, uh, this debate over the years, and certainly from the NetMundial conference and from the high-level panel that President Ilves chaired, is that this governance ecosystem, as it already exists, is not a monolithic or an apex type of a system where there is an organization. It's a very distributed or decentralized one. So I, I think most of us, our instinct at this point is not to assume that there can be a central organization that would come out of any process that could span most, if not all, of these kinds of issues. Really what we're talking about here is enabling better performance uh, of a very decentralized a set of expertise and resources out there to be applied to individual problems. And on the implementation question, that means that this is, it's important not to think about this as a universal norm setting process. This is a bottom up uh, world, if you will, in which uh, very often behaviors can be influenced by leading practice that begins to be accepted more widely. And that begins to set an informal or soft norm or expectation. And that will happen most likely in different kinds of combinations for different issues. And so we approach this with a real sense of humility about the complexity and the enormity of the resources and the different activities that are already going on. And may, maybe there are solutions that exist, but they're just not very widely understood, let alone widely adopted or practiced. And I think that's the best way to think about this question about well, will there be an organization created or how will you move to implementation? It'll be a function of self-organizing critical mass or rough consensus types of activity on different uh, issues. Last very quick word about uh, the, the process of discussion. We, we at the forum are committed to run over the next couple of years a, a structured set of, of dialogues about different facets of this issue engaging our particular community. We are not the only such platform, but we are a very special platform in this regard, and it has a utility that complements, in our view, the very grassroots types of discussions, such as you'll see next week in Istanbul. But for that, for us, we will already next, uh, in a couple of weeks, in our annual meeting of new champions in uh, Tianjin, China, begin to have a few uh, discussions among the various participants there on different facets of this issue. And we're very pleased to be engaging with uh, a variety of actors, but including the minister in China who's responsible for these issues. He'll, he'll be par participating. Similarly, we anticipate that we'll have discussions in India when we are convening our India uh, summit uh, later this year in, in November. We, we understand that there'll be some other discussions that will take place on different fora. In addition to those substantive conversations, we want to have a specific consultation about how should we operate this particular initiative? They're related but somewhat different questions, and we'll begin that conversation about how to structure those more organizational conversations right after the press conference uh, here at the forum. Thanks. Would anyone else like to come in on that, or should we just check for some more questions? President Elvis. Well, let me just say, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. We do not have democratic legitimacy. We are not elected here, but that's the whole point of a multi-stakeholder uh, model, which is that you want civil society involved. Uh, and so, I mean, clearly when it comes to implementation, we don't have the right to impose any rules. On the other hand, we can certainly explain what best practices are. I mean, take the example of Transparency International. Um, I mean, everyone wants to be in a good place on that, but, but I mean, when you see your country in a bad place, it not only uh, I mean, it also causes the people in that country to say, wait a minute, we have a problem here, uh, and let's do something about it. Uh, so uh, when we look at internet governance, and you see countries that are clearly not doing the kind of thing that we think should be done, well, I mean, then we can say that, or we can rank order, and we can have criteria. I mean, how, how, how open is the country to... to uh, uh, to a multi-stakeholder model, what, how does it do when it, where it comes, when it comes to internet freedom? I mean, there are a whole range of possibilities that are short of world government. I mean, which will never happen. Uh, but certainly in terms of uh, optimal practices, in terms of uh, better practices, uh, in terms of showing the benefits of uh, highlighting and uh, showcasing the benefits of countries that are more open and great, which, as I am convinced, have faster and greater development, 
All of these things are motivators. But, you know, sort of implementing, now we have program five-year plan, we fill, you know, that doesn't really fit into this. Should we have a quick uh, check on uh, other questions? Gentlemen there. And I know people want to do one-to-one -one interviews with our panelists, so we'll probably try and take this question as the last one and then give you a little bit of time just to do one-on-ones. Gentlemen. Thank you. Barak Otieno from Africa Top Level Domains Organization. Um, my question to the panel is, um, what exactly do you expect us to do when we leave um, this place today? Because I believe there was a particular reason that was taken, there was a particular reason why the group was chosen. Most of them I can see are leaders. So it would be good to, de to come out clearly on what you expect us to do in the next six months so that we can move from the current position to whatever position we deem to be good. Because after six months, we'll be asked, what did we achieve when we came to Geneva? I think that's a very good question. I, was, I think Rick was saying you'll be exploring that immediately this press conference ends. But um, I don't know if anyone else wants to come in on that. Yeah, I could, uh, Barak, thank you for your question. I think immediately after this press conference, we're going to ask all of us to come together and to start thinking in practical terms, how do we take some of the uh, recommendations uh, and directions that came from the uh, panel that uh, President Ilves ran, as well as from the Netunjal meeting in Sao Paulo, and put them into action. So I give you an example. Uh, both the panel's report, as well as Net Mundial in Sao Paulo, uh, made it very clear that we have a gap in internet governance, which is to provide a clear link between internet governance issues and available internet governance solutions to these issues. That mapping is missing. Today, we do it by going to conferences and talking and hopefully finding people who can help us to find solutions. So one of the things we'd like to move on, as an example of a practical thing, is how do we together build the knowledge and the know-how and a tool that would be available to the whole world so that available solutions are immediately mapped to existing issues. Uh, that's one example of many things we'd like to do this afternoon together. And I just would like to add to the gentleman from Mexico. Uh, Let's be clear that there are really three stages to solving this problem, which were outlined in, in the report of President Ilves' panel. There's issue identification, there's solution identification, and then there is solution implementation. What we are focusing on now is this middle stage. I think there are many fora that identify issues. I think all of us know that we can easily uh, point to many good places that have identified the issues we're all facing. And issues are evolving all the time. What we need now is a machinery and a set of mechanisms that start solving these issues. Once we have solutions, those who can implement them, either voluntarily or through government rules or regulations, can then pick these solutions and implement them. That's a separate stage and a separate step. Here we're focused on this middle ground, which is sorely missing, and if we don't move into it, then those trying to implement do not have real broad solutions that they can pick from. That's what we're hoping to do. Anne and Minister Ahmeda. I, I wanted to follow up on that. I think um, if there's one thing that people in this room do when they fly back home, it should be to convene a meeting sometime in the next few months with all of the stakeholders, including internet users. So let's get the Chamber of Commerce in the room. Let's get the Farmers Association in the room. Let's get women's groups in the room. Let's get journalists there. Um, let's get the technical community there. Let's get the Domain Name Authority, if there is one. Let's get the ISPs Association. Look at the Net Mundial outcome document and start that dialogue of how do we translate this in our own country? Can we have something like a CGR, CGI.br? Do we need something like a Marco Seville.internet in our country to establish the rights and responsibilities yeah. of all stakeholders? How do we get that off the ground? 
and which actors can help to close the gaps that are there. Yeah. What role could the business community play? What role could the World Economic Forum play? What is the responsibility of government? What is the responsibility of the UN, of the WISIS process, of the IGF? So that those, those views can be openly exchanged and discussed at a national level and we're giving real substantive input into moving the net mundial outcomes forward that comes from the national level. Minister. Well, I think that Jelena read my mind, <laughs> but I'm just going to complement a little bit what you can do after you leave this meeting. Uh, one concrete thing is that you can uh, uh, join your community and come up with suggestions. That, that the way that we did in the Net Mundial, we had suggestions coming from different parts of the world, from different communities. They were uh, channeled by the one net. So if you go back and find a, a, com a community that you think that you, you are involved, so you can start giving suggestions. That's, that's what we expect. Piano uh, Yes, and maybe coming back to the question of the journalists around make it practical. What it is you are doing? What is the outcome? What, what, how we can take from here? Uh, uh, and for me, what we've been doing this morning, and if I had to characterize what we are aiming at with the WEF, is to create, and it's pretty bold, it's pretty unique. That's why it's probably not simple to explain like this. Because what we said is, internet is a global thing, which is going to require global governance, and global set of whatever principles and standards coming from the, the net module. It can't be solved by any typical country-based, and I participated personally to many uh, in Europe, uh, where you have a meeting, you're putting 20 uh, so-called experts, uh, most of the time local, to deal with the data privacy or internet regulation for a typical country. This is not the way it works. The internet is too global is too complex. Yes. You have too many stakeholders around the world that it can't be solved by a small group in one country trying to deal with these big issues. This is the hypothesis that it should be globally organized, globally managed with big issues. How you do that? Either you have 150 countries around the world with 150 meetings trying to solve their problem, or you doing something which is bold and which is what the WEF is aiming at enabling, you're creating a platform, a technology platform, a communication platform, a set of tool techniques, principles, where all the stakeholders around the world, and many were there this morning in the room, will be able to contribute on very specific issues. I mean, it's not free lunch. We have the issues. Yeah. We know around user access, around data privacy, data protection, data integrity, around human rights, around intellectual property rights. So we will have the set of issues. And then put in this web unit communication architecture where the business community uh, representing the ICT, which what I'm doing today in my capacity, will be able to contribute on specific issues. And then with all this set of contribution, the WEF and the members and the participants will be able to step up, speak up, take the best initiative around the world and engage with the policymakers, engage with the regulators and say, on these specific issues, this is we, what we found with, I would use the word crowdsourcing, the best expert around the world. It's pretty unique because it's not the way you typically do that kind of thing. It's managed locally. You're putting few people from the local government, few experts. You give six months. They provide a report and a recommendation. And you write a policy and a regulation which is irrelevant, given the nature of the internet. We and the WEF want to do something which probably has never been done at that scale. And it has to be done that way, because this is the only way to put the right governance for something which is so global. That's what I feel yeah, thank, after thank this you morning. Thank very much. Fadi, let's turn to you for the last word. It's very difficult to follow this. <laughs> uh, thank you, Pierre. This was very lucidly said, and it's true. It's the reason we're here at the, at the forum. Um, I want to address something far less uh, passionate, but uh, I heard two <laughs> questions related to the new organization and one about ICANN. So this is technical, but I want to set the record straight. I don't think there is anyone here that is presupposing 
that the solution must be done in some new organization or new structure. So it's very important that we took a pause after Net Mundial and the panel, and we're bringing the global community in the most fertile place for us to have a platform, the World Economic Forum, to debate and discuss what solutions are needed, and then, and only then, can we decide if there are pathways to solve these solutions. It could be that we need a solution solved at the World Wide Web Foundation. Maybe we find another solution that can be well solved at the Internet Society. So before we get to who will solve, let's first agree what are the problems, how can we get the solutions, then we'll find, as uh, Rick Salmon said, the pathways or the platforms to go make these solutions concrete and to maintain them. That's very important. And as to your question, Jamil, about uh, ICANN and whether, so let's be clear. ICANN has its own process that is happening in order to uh, globalize ICANN, reform it, and get it ready post the US specific and unique role in ICANN. That is happening and that is independent from this initiative. Right? And I think the world is working with us to make that transition successful. Here in this initiative, we are not bound by that timeline. We are moving. We are building uh, pathways to real solutions so we can move forward. I hope this is helpful, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, the forum does have uh, some experience in this space. If I can just one. finally call for one last word on my colleague, Rick Sams, and then just ask Professor Schwab just to draw proceedings to a close. One, one final note, just would want to indicate that as part of this ongoing policy dialogue, our next annual meeting in Davos will have an important focus on this set of issues. Just wanted to make sure that was aware. Professor Schwab. Thank you for participating. It was a great engagement of everybody. And I feel if there is, just coming back to one question, if there is one key message which comes out, which is very important for the world, it is the willingness of all the countries we were in the room of all the stakeholders which were in the room to make sure that the internet does not become fragmented. Because we had a lot of discussions in the media of the possible breakdown uh, of the internet in uh, national units or whatever it was. But here I think we had a great commitment and a plea to keep the internet open for everybody and to use it as an instrument to enhance the dignity of any individual person. I also want to just uh, uh, come back with my colleague uh, Rick Simonsen um, in terms of uh, pressure on us. We know because if uh, the deadline of six months was mentioned, uh, I suddenly thought, uh, oh my God, it's not six months, it's only five months. Because in five months, uh, we have the annual meeting of Davos. And we are very aware that um, based on the expectations which we have created uh, here, um, we will be measured uh, in terms of delivery. And delivery not of decisions, but delivery of uh, a, uh, a platform uh, for real interaction. And I should remind you, um, we are talking about the internet. So a lot of the interaction which we foresee uh, over the next months will be based on the internet, which means will enable us to include everybody and to collect as many uh, good practices, examples, proposals, criticism. Uh, so it will be certainly a cooperative process. And in Davos, we will have the next phase um, looking at uh, possible solutions proposed uh, through this process. I want to conclude by um, uh, thanking uh, all the members uh, from so many countries, from so many organizations who participated this morning at our dialogue. And I want to thank particularly uh, the panel and uh, President Elvis for the chairmanship of those discussions and the excellent cooperation, I should mention, which we had. Uh, this was not out of meeting out of the blue. Um, it was a meeting uh, prepared. Um, and I think um, 
uh, the best preparation for the meeting, actually, Minister, was uh, your meeting and your initiative. And my special thanks also uh, to, to ICANN, um, with an organization with which we have established great cooperation to complement the more political, economic, social issues, also with the technological issues, because it's very important to have uh, both uh, integrated. We cannot uh, separate uh, the technical and the more uh, political, economic, and social issues, uh, each from another. And I want to thank uh, the civil society because um, we, we work very closely and actually yesterday we had a preparatory meeting in some way uh, of about 60 representatives of um, civil society. Uh, you see downstairs the tent. We had um, 4,000 young people uh, in the age of 20 to 30 here assembled over the weekend. Uh, they came from over 150 countries. Uh, we want to integrate youth because they will be the main beneficiaries of the internet in the future. And finally, I want to thank uh, Pierre and uh, our uh, business uh, members uh, because at the end it's also a business uh, enabling, business driven um, uh, action which, we, we, which um, uh, the internet represents. So we have to make sure that business is engaged in a responsible and responsive manner. So thank you again. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks to the panelists. Thanks, everybody. Please give them a chance to take their microphones off before you field them with questions. And to all the members uh, and colleagues from the Geneva Press Corps, I very much look forward to seeing you again next week for the launch of the Global Competitiveness Report, which uh, will be midweek next week. So if I don't have a chance to say... Hello now, please uh, catch up with me then. Thank you.